Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Bors with the Mike Bors channel. Thank you for watching. We are back working on our boat today, and in today's video, we are going to adjust and set our distributor points. Let's get started. All right, DIYers inside the garage. This is my grandma's 1989 glass port, and it's got a 3.0 liter Mercruiser inboard engine, and that's what we'll be working on today. And coming to the back, it's got an Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive, fully rebuilt. However, we are going to hop in and most important, step number one, not only disconnect your black negative cable from your battery, but also disconnect your red positive cables from your battery. In our case, our battery is not even installed in the boat. Again, we are working with the electrical and ignition system in today's video. Cut all electrical power to the system. And real quick, before we open up the engine compartment or cover to gain access to our 3.0 Mercruiser inboard, I just wanted to show you a close-up view of the fueler gauge as shown there. You'll see how we use it as the project goes on. And here it is again, our 3.0 Mercruiser inboard engine. And we do our best to keep it clean. And we just replaced our distributor cap, rotors, points, etc. Everything inside that distributor, or in other words, underneath the cap, as well as our spark plug wires, our plugs, our ignition coil. And today we are going to set the points inside that distributor. Taking a big step back, I want to give you a very good top view of the distributor cap and direct our attention to the screws. You see starboard side screw is more of a chrome or silver, and the port side or inward screw is more of a brass or gold color. Don't mix those up. Take a lot of photos before removing any parts or disconnecting anything on your ignition system. With the camera set down and positioned, I am now going to unscrew both of these screws. Again, starboard side is a silver or chrome screw, and the inner or port side screw is more of a brass and gold. So don't get those mixed up when it comes time to reinstall and secure everything. Once you get both of these screws removed or loosened, you don't actually have to remove them, but you can. But I recommend just leaving them in for organizational purposes. And I can carefully pull up on the distributor cap and you can still see all the spark plug wires are still connected. I might be able to position this up to a point where I can work on the points and inner mechanisms of the distributor cap. You've got your condenser, your points, your rotor, your shaft that feeds all the way into the cam and engine, and you've got your electrical wiring. I may grab a zip tie and zip tie this cap upward. And I did just that as you can see. I have zip tied the distributor cap up and ever so carefully removed a spark plug boot from the plug itself to give me better access to pull it up. Don't bend or crimp the spark plug wires. That would not be good. And now to a close-up view of all the inner parts underneath your distributor cap or on the top aluminum plate of your distributor. And I'm going to position the camera. We are going to adjust the point. And let me get the camera into position for our exact 3.0 liter Mercruiser engine placard. And that is just a sticker on the engine block or cover itself. And you can see on the right hand side, if you go down, you will see plug gap 0 0.035 and then point gap 0 0.022. So that is how you track down your exact point gap setting for your exact engine. I've got the camera position again. Here's your condenser and it feeds into this electrical connection fitting here and it's secured in place with a screw. And then you've got your top rotor and I can actually pull this off here shortly, which I will, because I want to show you the high points and low points of the actual shaft. And for this project, you want to make sure it is on a high point. And if I turn the shaft, you can see the actual point move in and out. And right now I am on a high point. And as I shift it in, or clockwise, I move to a low point, which actually pulls the point inward and makes contact, as you see there. And I'll carefully lift up on the rotor. There's what it looks like inside. And again, you've got the shaft that feeds all the way down inside the engine, where the spline gear is, that feeds into your cam and crank system. And let me scroll the camera out. I do want to show you the tool as I work through this project. This is what's called a point gap feeler tool and a must. Down below in the comment section as well as the description section will be a link on where to purchase this. And again, when referencing our exact engine placard or sticker, we saw that we had a .022. So we are going to start with the .022 as you see here, which is the very tip. And then as this part feeds up to the circular hinge portion or rotational hinge, it gets larger and makes its way to .024. And we're basically going to insert it inside the little gap here, as you see. And there is a little bit of rubbing. 
and I'll do my best to center it up and not get in your way or bump the tool. And again, on that high point, you want to be able to just shift the feeler inside that gap. I'll set that aside. And to adjust the actual feeler, you've got a flathead screw just to the left, and you will loosen that ever so slightly. And on the actual plate itself here, you have an oval machine cut where that screw goes through. And that oval machine cut will allow you to move this entire point to the right or left like that. And right down here is a machine cut in the top aluminum plate that allows you to insert a flathead screwdriver and carefully move the point back and forth to properly set your point. And with that said, I'm going to carefully come from above and loosen up the flathead screw. And again, you may want to grab a smaller tip flathead screwdriver and carefully insert it inside that little slot. As you can see, I can move the points. Look at that. Let me scroll in even more. And again, I'll lift up on the condenser wiring. And there is that little slot that the screwdriver is resting inside and shifting that point back and forth. So in order to actually set your point, again, make sure you're on a high point, which in our case, we have four high points because it is a four cylinder. And then in between each high point is a low point. And again, we're shooting for 0 0.022. And I'll pull the screwdriver out. And as you can see right now, there is absolutely no gap in between the two connections. And because of that, it will be literally impossible to insert our little tool or feeler tool inside the two points. See that? So we need to adjust that. So we're going to again come inside here and ever so carefully open it up while I simultaneously insert the feeler tool from above. And right now it's catching. So if I pull it out, there is resistance and I'm going to ever so carefully open it up as shown there. And once you get that perfect setting, come in from above with your additional screwdriver and carefully tighten that screw. You're kind of doing five things at once at this stage, but tighten it up. Take the screwdriver out, grab your feeler tool and come right in. And as you see, it's a little loose, so I'm going to adjust it back. And DORs, this is extremely important because if you've got too large of a gap or too small of a gap, your engine will actually run worse than it did before you replaced everything. That's not what you want, right? So loosen up the screw, come in with the feeler. And there is a little bit more tension, as you see. And do your best to come in as straight as possible. I need to open that up just a little bit but not a lot and hold it right there coming with the feeler still some tension or friction and again I'm applying downward pressure to that point plate as I set this that's much better followed by carefully applying downward pressure on that plate as I simultaneously tighten this screw oh you saw it move I gotta reset it And again, coming in from above with the feeler. That's exactly where I want it. And again, DIYers, in the event that you are replacing your distributor cap, as well as the entire tune-up kit, which includes your condenser, points, and rotor, you want to make sure you properly set your point gap before resecuring everything. Because if you don't, it may even lead to your engine not even starting because there is a lack of spark within the system, which is right here in that gap. In other words, if that point gap is not properly set when you install your brand new tune-up kit, it is very likely that this point right here is not creating an electrical spark, which in return is not sending that electrical current upward into the rotor and inside the distributor cap as it spins, which ultimately leads to your spark plugs never actually getting spark or ignition from the system. So you can keep cranking your engine with no success of ever starting your engine. And back to the rotor. Again, this is brand new. We replaced everything a few days ago and properly align that little inner tab right there with the machine slot or cut on the shaft and push it down as shown there. And this part right here, as the engine is running, it is spinning. And as it spins, it makes contact with all of the electrical leads or contacts inside the inner portion of your distributor cap. And in return, it sends that current through the spark plug wires and to the plugs and into the engine where it sparks the fuel and air mixture. So again, I'll move that just a couple more times. I'll grab the feeler tool and check it. 
I like it. Next, I'll go ahead and cut the zip tie and lower the distributor cap back onto the distributor and plate. Align the screws, both silver or chrome and the port side brass or gold, and tighten them in place. Coming up top and to the inner portion of the distributor cap, and there are all the contacts as shown there. All right, DIYers, as you can see, the distributor cap is resecured on the top plate of the distributor itself, feeding inside the engine. And again, just double check that all of your spark plug boots and wires are properly secured on both the top portion of the distributor cap as well as the respective spark plugs that feed inside the engine. And in addition, that center wire or boot right there that feeds all the way up to your ignition coil right there. You want to make sure both of those connections are properly installed, secured, and not loose. And DIYers, that again is how you set your gap for the internal point inside your distributor cap. And with that said, before we wrap this video up, I do want to talk about some helpful video links down below in the comment section as well as the description section, which include, again, replacing your entire distributor cap. In addition, a video link on replacing your spark plug wires and their respective plugs that again feed inside the engine. There will also be a video link on the proper and safe way to replace your ignition coil, which is right there. In our case, it's mounted starboard side of the engine, and it is a 12-volt ignition coil. And we may post a couple additional videos, as well as the link to our entire Fixing Boats and Fixing Jet Ski playlist. A lot of helpful info for all of you. Let us know if you have any questions. From here, do us a favor. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.